Hello everyone and uh, welcome to the third part of our series of speaking of Pazinski's biography. So let's begin uh, with uh, what happened in Afghanistan. So Pazinski knew that the Soviets became mired within only six weeks of the invasion and then sought ways to withdraw from the landlocked country. The reason being that they had only invaded with regional and not global goals in mind to bring up a communist government on their southern border, fearing that otherwise uh, it could have been replaced with another non-aligned government. At that time, he knew that the Soviets wanted the United States to stop the financial support of the Mujahideen. And that is precisely why he got President Carter to approve the arming of the Mujahideen with weapons like Stinger missiles and heavy artillery. Brzezinski got exactly what he wanted, the resolve of the Soviet generals to fight the Mujahideen in order to counter American influence in Afghanistan. Being the visionary that he was, he viewed it as part of a larger unraveling of US influence in the Middle East and the Persian Gulf region. Brzezinski's arc of crisis theory had such persistence in internal discussions in Carter's White House that even the Soviet ambassador to the United States of the time had to recognize as most excellent propaganda. It was Brzezinski's grand strategy that pulled Pakistan and even the Saudis into the Afghan-Soviet war. But a lot of people blame this strategy of Brzezinski for what happened after the Soviet army left Afghanistan. Their rationale is when you view international politics as a board game and not as something that has real consequences for the people involved, one ends up following their ambitions at whatever cost. We want to ascertain that the argument that Brzezinski was blinded by the hatred of Soviet Union in designing his strategy actually does have grounds because of what happened after the Soviets left Afghanistan and also the events in the region when the Soviet states broke up were reminiscent of the riding of death and war horsemen. Just look at how Vladimir Putin is trying to resurrect the Soviet Union through Ukraine, Belarus and Kazakhstan. Very few people know that it was not the primary choice of Brzezinski and had there not been the Iranian revolution, he had planned to use Iran and China to counter the Soviets in Afghanistan. Do you not think that what would be happening in the alternative universe where the Americans had not taken the approach that they did in 1979 is anybody's guess. But uh, what we know is that what Brzezinski did was very intricately planned. Just imagine, speaking of Brzezinski, a man who viewed the world to be run by a world order rather than a balance of power, claiming to be the messenger of Islam. Yes. Brzezinski personally went to the Khyber Pass in Pakistan to motivate the local tribals to fight as Muslims. We know of their deep belief in God and we are confident that their struggle will succeed. You know, that land over there is yours. You'll go back to it one day because your fight will prevail and you'll have your homes and your mosques back again because your cause is right and God is on your side. A complete version 
of Associated Press report on Baziski's Pakistan visit is in the description of this video. Recently declassified State Department documents also show that Bazinski knew that the Soviets did not plan to stay in Afghanistan had the Americans not provided military support to the Mujahideen who were destabilizing the Soviet-backed government there. But why do you think that Bazinski still chose to engage America in the region while carrying out the supplies of arms through Pakistan and channeling funds through Saudi Arabia? Whilst uh, utilizing the Saudi Wahhabist ideology to motivate fighters for jihad. The multifaceted scheme had the repercussions of the Pakistanis using the weapons money for the Afghans to fund their nuclear program and keeping some of the weapons for themselves some of which of course were later provided to Iran another side effect and of course a very bad one was the expansion of a radical view of Islam which created hostility for America in the entire Islamic world A prominent scholar, W. Taylor Fane, viewed Bazinski's arc of crisis as a result of a decade-long series of discussions going back to Henry Kissinger and not solely as a result of Bazinski himself. Yet, the doctrine of arc of crisis was Bazinski's, which entailed that after Afghanistan, the Russians planned to conquer Pakistan and reach the Persian Gulf through the Arabian Sea. You know that that turned out to be false as revealed by a number of documents of that era which were later declassified both from the American and the Soviet sites. One of the most famous quotes of recent international political history was said within six weeks of the invasion. Bazinski single-handedly had thrown down the drain all hope of the Soviet Union to establish a stable government of Babra Kamal. Bazinski had sown the thought in the American psyche so deeply of the Soviet desire to expand to South Asia and Middle East and that the only option to stop it was the military support of the Mujahideen. The Reagan administration not only continued the policy but invigorated it. That becomes particularly relevant considering the fact that Reagan won on the claim that Carter lacked leadership qualities. It is said about Bazinski that senior political figures like Henry Kissinger, Lawrence Eagleburger and Richard Holbrook viewed Bazinski to be too hawkish and not enough of an honest broker. This is the reason why Siren Swans could not work with him. Although the disagreements between the Secretary of State and Brzezinski started during the US-Soviet proxy wars in Ethiopia and Somalia, Brzezinski believed that the Soviets were breaking the rules of the nixon kissinger detente, but Siren Swans did not. Cyrus Swans resigned after Brzezinski's decision of the commando mission sent to rescue the American hostages held by Ayatollah Ruhullah Khomeini's revolutionary forces in Iran after the overthrow of the Shah of Iran. Uh, that was a disastrous desert expedition in April 1980 that claimed eight American lives. Carter still chose Brzezinski as his NSA due to his brilliance and guidance that he gave to Carter that led to his victory. Brzezinski's countering of the Soviet influence in Cuba, Africa and the Near East is no lesser than his role in Afghanistan because on those issues, Harold Brown, Walter Mondell and Stansfield Turner got some say regarding the path of action to follow. Otherwise, Brzezinski influenced the overall foreign policy of the United States to a great extent. We want you to think about it that uh, how Brzezinski despite of the opposition of almost all people at the second place after the president, cultivated Carter's regard for him into an instrument of obtaining authorization for his ambitious plans. We want to posit and discuss that uh, Brzezinski would have been one cunning and shrewd personality with 
sharp penetrating eyes, a strong polished accent and a very articulate way of talking about his subject matter with exceptional command that is. After Kissinger, it was Brzezinski who actually transformed how the US viewed the Southwest Asian, the East African and the Middle Eastern states, with thinking of them as a single unit around the Indian Ocean. Brzezinski sought to position the US military in bases near the Indian Ocean. We are sure that you can come up with a reason why. Because the oil embargo of 1973 had caused severe problems for not only America and its allies due to their economies being heavily dependent on oil supplies from the Gulf states, but also for the longer political and economic ramifications of that region. Oil was and still is one of the most important ingredients for modern economies. Connecting the dots, it was that time in 1970s when international power dynamics started shifting from the abstract concept of nation states, which were normally formed on the basis of religion or ethnicity, to more objective measures like that of GDPs and military powers. Remember when uh, Margaret Thatcher and Ronald Reagan depacked the dollar from gold? Brzezinski very well comprehended the international economic system and where it was actually heading. We are finishing this video with an excerpt from his book written in 1970. Enjoy!